you mentioned when you were a child how you didn't have that kind of activity that sort of thing. I found that interesting because you told me that I would take some of the sort of kind of stuff positive points of view. I found that very interesting because you can say that other people, in fact, everyone who sets in the trade and you set negative points of view, you can say people that they feel still out in some way with the boom, they were afraid of this moment, so they were asking. I think that even though we're living in a highly sexualized atmosphere, that in reality, we have to be a place. And, you know, I, just, I opened the show uh, last week with the Lana of the Queen of the Design Museum. And I was rather upset when I learned that the show was um, not open to my and I thought to myself, and this is a design show, it's full color, it's a design show, it's a design and it's a design the body of the We're going through the design world from process to Marino to my, one of my natural issues, like a brand new natural code, etc. Down to 20,000 years ago, which is pre of the Salas Sabbath of the and when I learned that it was, was, was not open to the uh, adolescent, I thought to myself, why did they play the show like that? When in reality they could say, adolescent should be covered by the world. And by banning it for adolescents, they, they actually again create another level of safety. And it, it does nothing to further our sexual well being. Understand them. And this is a show in the and there was absolutely nothing compromising. And that could not be easily explained by an informed at all. Uh, maybe this is the problem. I thought, but still, it is a generation, maybe the next generation, be ready to actually deal with this and talk to them on a very open understanding of the next level. And I hope that this is what happens to this specific to this sort of progress. Mm-hmm. And I believe that it is important because. Until we continue to, to avoid our sexuality, we also, we also are creating levels of difficulty in our basic relationships. Even with, with our family members, with, with, with people in general. The sexual frustration is a really unhelpful thing. So we can feed into that for some I wanted to talk quite quickly about the book, which we do, because you touched on this, and you mentioned design, and you mentioned the one that this is what you've been working on. And that's something that I find interesting about your work, is that you do have this kind of incredible aspect of background, and that's what you do with these objects. And we talked before, when you think about sensation and ideas, the book is very much about ideas and academic understanding, but also you've got that kind of so how do you manage to be married to the object that you've got? Well, to be honest, the, um, the fact that I found myself doing sexual research, um, I was described by a few colleagues as one of the projects, and I feel like I need to do more formally than I did with my PhD at the time of the university that I was using. For the moment, that's the time. But the design work is actually the launch pad towards an incredible amount of research over the past couple of years, which led to the Super Project. And it was through my interest, it was through, it was through the fact that I understood that my sexuality was actually a little bit different in any respect than someone else's. And I discovered that because. After 2000, um, so September 2011, um, excuse me, after uh, September 11, 2001, um, the events of the of disaster really gave me the courage to come out of um, a private, creative private, because I was doing the erotic collection and wanted to keep on as a private collector. And actually, Shed light on what was my preferred subject matter. And I um, 
not even to the 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 and in that moment, there's not going to be a point of time. Now, that was in place by my time. I was a little pinky. And I realized in that moment that the tendency of people to try to grow it, me and others, and of course themselves, someone who's going to be judged and others, they'll say, actually, these people still believe themselves. So, you know, maybe they'll just say, well, that's a biographical. It's not going to tell them that to be more intense. It is not going to work for me to just be the object because it's still making sense to me. I'm keeping hold. I'm going to go nowhere with it unless I actually start to diffuse some information. I'm not a firm believer that it's not going to go nowhere with it. In the moment that we have to put something in the box, so that we can find it. Whereas my goal is to say, away with my thing. As long as we respect each other's limits, and no one's in a sense of being a sense of And we are consenting to share whatever else it may be. We have one day. Then it's okay. It's normal. It's, that's one of the words I say. Okay, I, I eliminate the word normal in the very beginning of the book. Because what is normal? No one is normal. People think we're talking about the strategy of others once we get to know them. I want to talk a little bit about the mental kind of heart centric idea, and I think we touched on this a little bit before, which is this idea of people like understanding the way they should be getting pleasure from them, so that's often led by, or people think it should be led by men, and that pleasure should come from a man. I thought that was quite an interesting. Can you really do you sort of undo that idea a little bit, and you make it much and kind of really come here and women understanding their sexuality is not the same as opposed to people like saying that. Is that something that is important to make sure that it's Well, what was important to me was that the book is actually the same. It's not the same. It doesn't have a sexual orientation. It's for men, women, men, gay, whoever. Or for any sexual orientation. In fact, I think that there's, there's definitely a, 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 a moment, it has been a moment in history where they have it because it's only been 50 years that we have not been in this world. Our pleasure has not been owned by a man and our entire being. So they were able to do that. Things have really changed radically. And they're changing every day and, and, and evolving. And it's something new. Um, I think it's very important that women actually bring the men with them. And that this is why I didn't address the book to the women that I wanted men to be the book. Because men were led to believe that I told that you know, it's not just about women. It's not just about women. But under my opinion, men were led to believe that they were sexual superior and that they knew everything about sex and it was about everything for that matter. And that a woman wouldn't be thinking about it. It was a vision that a man was sexually, that a male was sexually more empowered and stronger, they say. And today we know that that's not the case. I think we have to be very delicate about I'm interested that you say you can talk about that and you make them intelligent, because that's something that's so strengthened about the book, which is incredibly much research and can ideas that are in there, you know, whether it's just and they can still go to the patient or whether it's what we discussed before, whether it's medical knowledge that you, that you, or your medical studies that you've read and you've acquired that knowledge. And was that something that, I think that's something that makes the book really unique, and is that something that you, it, it's quite dear to you, making, making it something that's informed, and yeah. it's not just instruction, it is ideas as well. Absolutely. I felt that it was the best thing that I wanted to design the world I was going to try to keep my life and make it safe. And to me, this book was different. And I think that uh, if you know not only how, but why, and sometimes you would think that how to provide sensation and why is the thing to do to turn someone on. Um, we already have a, a space where we can be comfortable, clearly, um, without some sort of that like that. We have to be prepared at the process. 
special relationship. It's still kind of interesting in the way that you find a little bit of everything in out of context or maybe not quite right. And you have to ask them what you're looking for. Someone who is just interested in the assessment, so they may not necessarily know what to look for. Mm-hmm. Um, at any rate, what 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 tends to be real and abnormal tends to be that can actually become a way and today, what used to be different, I mean, let's go back to time and think about the 1950s when, you know, the main slavery or angle or, or, or um, you know, the sight of a higher than the moon, was enough to make a face. Um, in the same Again, sex is no longer taboo. So, how do um, they use sex today within what the world of marketing and the generation of the company? They've gone hard for it. I mean, I've seen classic commercials where the lady is tied up and the cores and I don't know if it's a verbal threat, but I've seen also bombing the style of the fashion style. Um, things like wits and thoughts and what have you are really common in men's beliefs in terms of promotions and advertisement. Um, and again, so the idea is all of these things which are considered kinky or sick or perverted or um, symbols of sexual illness, suddenly they're being used to sell all sorts of things. Right? And often unrelated. So people are innately curious. For example, if I was to give you an object like this and say it is a necklace, you know my world is often even too random at this point in time. It is a necklace. If somebody puts this around their neck, it's going to be a power. It has a straight line that goes down the middle of the body, so it also makes you kind of sound like this. As you know, that's very um, You are eventually going to do this. If I go to a lingerie shop and I buy a pretty good shop, with a dress kind of way, as an accessory, I'm probably going to be the actor to do that a little bit. And the idea of it that I don't know how to control that. Is it really? Mm-hmm. Is to be able to use that tool to the best of our ability? And then we get all of this is coming to the surface. I think that we need to talk about it in a second. I think that so. also because, again, you know, I think about my generation, you know, we're all going to be, you know, we're going, we're going towards the sort of sexual uh, rediscovery somehow in this moment of time. But I think also of the adolescents. And I think that they need to be informed. They seem more hardcore porn than I've ever seen in my 40 40 years of life. So the kids are exposed to that, it's a museum. Those very often is so complicated and wide open. I went back to do an interview and I found a group of about 10 adolescents around my window. And I was so excited. I went up to them and said, Hello, I'm a sweet hunter. And I said, Do you have any questions? And they did have questions. And they just go to heaven. And I thought it was exciting. I think it was the show will probably be lots of it. And anyway, it's time to talk about it. It's all on the surface. It's all on the surface. And what I think is most dangerous is to not talk about it. Whether it's the fact that let's talk about what happened in the 80s, because between 1970 and 1980, we were on the cusp of a sexual revolution for real, and, and people were sexually explorative, open, enlightened, and in 1980 and all of a sudden, it was just a creation of hope with HIV. And since that happened, and since that disease has invaded our 
tribal rights and our intimacy. We've lived in an era of sectarianism, and only through knowledge can we actually live again balanced, um, healthy sex life. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we speak so little of is sexual well-being. For me, that too, you know, you are on higher level. I can say that I have some of you to the of my faith and body. And it's not a good thing. I think it's a good thing. But it's everything that's right. And um, I think that by shedding light, um, I think it's not a good thing. It's a lovely thing that it's experienced. Seriously, potentially transcendental levels of sexual sexual by learning to actually stroke the entire body of the sexual not just the genital, and by learning how to also extend uh, playtime and, and, and bring the sense of sacred back to our sex life. Our forefathers, our, our, our three of our forefathers, all treated sex as a sacred act. Mm-hmm. And we block that. Sex becomes a commercial sort of promotion device. And, you know, I've worked with children, and I'm working with all of them at the moment, and speak with them, they sometimes get out of it. I mean, I can't speak to them after them. Because, you know, they just seem to have never done it before, they're quite happy to have lost it. And, um, there's a lot of confusion that's created by pornography. Um, and I think simply being exposed to them before it's time. And that seems like kids from the age of five on are going They have repeated exposure to their hard work. And uh, I think that we have enough to work to dismantle the consequences of this kind of And there are people out there, I'm not working on my own, that people want to learn the things that I think 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 with the symbol of evil. But there is damage that I can do. I can do for Not only to get out of it, but also to get out of it. I see that porn is actually a really great thing. Because it will all just come out of the way or the convenient turn on it to get up to the easy app. But it's really a bad feature. So, I think it's one of the rare of it and you can actually watch it. But I see the effects of it on men as well as women. I've seen them with major issues in terms of, um, you know, the size of their body or the size of their body. You know, the frequency. And, you know, sometimes it's that porn is just one. Porn stars, I've got a lot of friends in the industry, they don't work, it's their job. And uh, they're so often assisted with men. In fact, the porn industry did not have exploded in the dimensions that it has for the it works for things like the mm-hmm. And the porn used to be a cottage industry, so that's the reality. And the genre the industry is really changed. Um, you know, it's going to be faster, you know, how to the day that I'm to. And your, your star in the show not only has to have a very big penis, but you also have to be able to be the best of it. In reality, detrimental to a man's health. <laughs> um, but they work hard in that different way. Do you think that some of the images and messages and ideas that are being put across by the kind of point that young people are accessing in particular, do you find that some of it is regressive and understanding? That's the reason. I think that we're in the middle of a sort of sexual modern art. And I think that until kids are not taught something more than the game is effective to being a family is going to be good. Even though it seems like we're in a sexually open environment, in reality, we're getting very little information that has to do with it now. What about pleasure culture? I'm interested in having a new culture and not necessarily pleasure culture. 
It can be said to be revelation every, every, every part of your being. When you have it, it's a beautiful thing. Life has to be a bad thing. You walk through the world and stuff like that. And you hit the sun, your energy is open, you feel good. I'll tell you that one. And you just keep that kind of thing. Because it's a big gift to the world that you get back together. Mm-hmm. We were technically touched by that. We live in a tight hip society and people are able to take care of their things. But that's not me. It's a bit more love that you don't talk about it. It's one thing about you know, the practices and some of the techniques that, you're, that you talk about in your book. You talk so wonderfully about opening up the idea of change and opening up people's possibilities. And, and there's such a positive idea to that. Um, well, I actually start with the body itself. Because, um, again, we, when we go in school and we learn about our bodies, we, we learn about the deep issues, the things that you say, how to avoid getting pregnant. And in America, if you happen to be back in America, you might actually be in a school where actually the only thing that you say is just not just that. And it's been proven that it actually leads to a rise in the uh, spread of the sexual transmitted disease and pregnancy. Um, athletes take place in the ignorance of the It is fundamental uh, to know how our sex and geography is laid out. I always need to stick to getting into the car to be able to go from point A to point B. One car has a map or a GPS provided. Do we have a map? You've got a map to know where you're going. You won't be fumbling around. You're not going to be off on the wrong road. And so I considered the first part of this to go to the bottom of And um, again, this idea that having sexual clarity and information is totally from And it's absolutely false. Um, you can't destroy things like that. There's things that we'll never be able to explain. And things that I would even attempt to explain. Um, but by having a mind, I know where to go. I know how to fix the paper. I know how to see what your body is going to be completely. I know where your blood is going to go. I know where your deep spot is. I know. By knowing, you can actually go there. Again, another, 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 another. And nobody's born with this. Again, that is the big myth. And poor guys, I mean, it's possible to be good at this thing. And unfortunately, by giving, by having given them that idea, a lot of women still believe that the sex to their male partner is giving them pleasure, rather than owning it on their own. On, on their own. In the moment that you can own your own pleasure, then you can actually share that pleasure mm-hmm. and be a better guy to them. Um, so, again, 50, let's say, 30, 30% of the book does deal with all the matters and understanding the world. It also deals with with, with pleasures, for example, um, the practical aspects of enjoying sex. And um, it's for many women. Mm-hmm. And then it's a response to that because the male part of it happens to be accessible to the women alone. Um, the final chapter is um, about the female part of it, which actually, we actually got the plan in 2001. So very recent steps for our work. Being put in a position where you can tell to the man, and you'll see on the on the map when you inside the book that um, the the biological basis of the sex scene. Um, and once you know how to deal with the body itself, well, why not go beyond the sex itself? The idea is that by stimulating the physical body beyond the physical condition, that the sexual energy can flow and radiate and move through the different kinds of things. Today, our, our, our Asian ancestors, both in China and in India, they were really intimidated. In fact, they understood that through this sexual experience, um, they could attain states, both physical and spiritual, that were very similar to what they could attain through meditation. In fact, the Taoists, they believed that, that illumination could be attained first with meditation and possibly through 
to learn and to 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 give them a manual to explore it, but really, yeah, I just want to explore it. I feel like um, and it's sometimes it's enough. You know, a lot of times, you know, I'm very good at it. Um, and of course, one of my again big goals is to have a category called misconception with with the whole concept of religion. And then the Bible is I think and by taking away ignorance and fear and fear and studying the others, um, we can actually grow the whole. Um, and, well, I want to bring this up to the back of the 